So maybe you have enough with the uh, i2brain, but uh, I would like to show some demos and some like more technical, not too much in detail, not to uh, be overwhel overwhelm you again, but some uh, results that we have. Uh, well, I will start with a general overview of the real application that we have, then I will show the three levels that uh, the i2brain application is uh, in with uh, this project, in particular the first one that uh, will show exactly how we deal, our, our model is built and how the solver is doing. Then the level two, I show you the results that we have obtained like uh, in this week and then the level three, there's a, a future prospect for, for, the, for the next step. So, uh, we have heard by the Professor Harris that he mentioned like a virtual lab. Uh, actually, I will call it like mathematical virtual sim simulator. This is what we actually uh, have uh, implemented in our model. The idea is really, well, I'm repeating some a little bit of uh, concept that I have uh, used in the previous talk. For example, multi-scale and the 0D circuits or 3D circuits. Uh, circuit 3D um, um, uh, domains. In particular, the idea is really to uh, use, uh, combine the two models, like the, the, the circuit model that is able to reproduce a lot of, a lot of information in a really big uh, domain. For example, uh, all the circulation is a systemic view for all the body, but uh, in this way, with the circuit-based model, you have a reduced model, so you can handle it with uh, with no high computational cost. And we are, would like to couple it with a three-dimensional porous media model. In particular, with, uh, in this case, what will be that the first level, the lamina cribrosa. And uh, the idea is really to uh, focus on some parts that, are, that, that are the doctors are more interested in. Uh, so uh, the circuit-based model uh, is, uh, is designed with the open modelica. Uh, this is, for example, an example that I show you. In particular, uh, these dots, colored dots, are the inputs that we are using. And uh, for example, we can see that these are the pressure uh, of the blood pressures. And here we have the lateral amina pressure and the intraocular pre pressure that also the Giovanna and, uh, and Professor Harris have mentioned. And uh, this is a kind of uh, um, data that are available in a lot of uh, uh, clinics and uh, hospital because are really uh, are data accessible and not invasively. The idea of our model is really to try to help clinicians to get some results and some data that uh, or maybe can uh, may be available with but with advanced uh, instruments as uh, professor Harris mentioned a lot of instruments that they can measure a lot of things and for us it's quite good because actually it's really good because we can actually test and validate our model but in other contexts there, there are also i think is the idea of the project uh, is to get some to, to get uh, to have a new uh, tool for normal standard uh, hospitals and uh, clinics to get some data that will not be avail available in a standard uh, in a standard way this is is the is the 3d image the 3d geometry that we have developed in, uh, in with salome and actually, this is the computational uh, tool that we have, uh, we are, where we are uh, solving our equation PD equations uh, with Phil++. Phil++. Uh, it took a long, uh, long way to ha get to all this image. Uh, the particularly that I would like to mention that it's, it can be uh, now for now it can be like parameterized. It it is parameterized, so there are some data that is taken from the MRI or with some or from OCT, for example that can measure some parts of the eye that we, we can put inside and decide to like modulate the, this uh, geometry in order to be more patient specific. Uh, I, I mentioned before the simulation inputs and this is quite important for us because we would really would like to start from some inputs that are uh, patient specific and they are easily accessible. For example, in model we are usually working with blood pressure and intraocular pressure and as I mentioned before the ocular geometry. Uh, this is an overview of the model. It's like, you know, in figure one you see the multi-scale and the two parts that are uh, implemented. So I will start with more directly with the level one, that the level one of uh, our project is uh, uh, the lamina fibrosa uh, with, with a 3D uh, 
so we are solving the PDE's equation of the uh, Darcy flow and the elasticity in the lamina cribrosa, and then we are coupling it with a zero D systemic uh, blood circulation in the in the in the retina. In particular, we see uh, exactly here. We, uh, as I mentioned, the elastic. We are solving the elastic and the Darcy equation, so it's a porous media with some uh, components of biomechanics, biome and uh, the, it is coupled with uh, this idea of the systemic view. Uh, I've, I've uh, it is told before that, uh, for example, there are some components, some uh, uh, phenomena that are more systemic as the circulation. If you change something in some parts, it is like it, it, there, it, it, this changement are also evident in other parts of the uh, of the body also. Instead, for other phenomena, for example, the biomechanics, the the we can also focus on just on some parts and and just uh, be careful with the boundary condition that we're using and we still have a good uh, accuracy the idea is really to so to solve this problem and i uh, will go uh, i don't want to uh, really explain a lot of these uh, equations but it's just to show up that uh, we are we were starting from a uh, the classic uh, Dorsey and Poisson equation for the fluid, and then we are going. Uh, we are using the uh, linear elasticity for isotropic. For now, we are focused with a really simple model, but uh, uh, we know that there are a lot of uh, groups uh, that are, especially in the United States, that are working on the on the biomechanics. And for us, it's just a box, a toolbox that we can just plug in, uh, uh, like a brick that we can change and put some more. Uh, accurated uh, model but for now we are more focused on the coupling and all the uh, overview of everything and this is the proelastic system the idea is really to have a continuous coupling between the 3d proelastic and the 0d blood circulation uh, for now this is not still uh, implemented the, the full coupling the, for now is a, just a one way but it's a future step that we'll, we will handle so this is our the boundary condition. Uh, the, with the, on the, the image on the left, uh, maybe it, uh, it's similar to the one that was presented by Professor Harris, that we are using the, the IOP is pushing from the, the part of that is close to the eye. Instead, the retrolaminal pressure is coming from the uh, intracranial pressure. So uh, we are trying to describe this uh, boundary condition. Inst instead, in the, in the hole that is in the lamina, that should be the, op is the opening for the central retinal artery and for the central retinal vein. In our model, we have taken the pressure, the pressure of the central retinal artery, uh, because it's the uh, hi uh, highest one. And for now, because it's uh, just we have deal with, uh, dealt with um, lamina cribrosa, but in the next model will be more clear, we have, uh, we have imposed that no displacement condition on the, on the boundary, lateral boundary. Uh, on the right, uh, there is the boundary condition for the Poisson problem, and actually, uh, we have imposed. Actually, it's not imposed. It's a new in, uh, integral boundary condition that we have developed uh, uh, with our uh, in, in our group with a new method solver that is called HDG. And uh, with this integral boundary condition, we have taken into account the, the, the output that is coming from the zero D circulation blood flow. So actually, the, this value of QI and the, actually the value of PCRV are taking from like I sh let me show you from this from this one from this one actually we are just changing this part uh, we are substituting substituting this part with the 3D one and actually we are taking the flow that is coming here and the pressure that is here and we are using it in the in the in here, here in the this boundary condition. So I will start with a demo. I would like to show you how it's working. It's a really rough because uh, uh, we don't have time and uh, it takes a little bit of time. So tell me if you can see it. Uh, okay, it's you can see it. Okay, so actually wait. Okay. Okay, so we I have prepared. Okay. Um, in field plus plus, it's a model that is taking a time on the Poisson and the elasticity, and then it's the test. But actually, I can show you before the um, the config, the JSON files that we have used to input to take input. Uh, so we can see here are the um, the parameters for the materials. 
So these is are some values that we have retrieved from the literature. And then, well, I will show here directly. If, if I go down, OK, uh, the source term has in the equation is 0. And then here, for example, here, you can see that uh, the, the uh, hole is the opening that is inside and is taking the, the value of the pressure that is taken from the, the, uh, the, the data file that is coming from the uh, open modelica, so the, the 0D circuit. Then the, we have a no-man condition for the Poisson, like 0, so no uh, flux that is going out uh, into the eye or into the optic nerve. And then uh, the intercom under condition that I mentioned that is uh, taking also from, the, uh, the, from, the, from our uh, 0D model. From, for what concerns the elasticity, just to show, it's like we can actually, it's quite easy here just uh, to change values. Uh, 0 0.33, actually, I just uh, put uh, the values of IOP and retroamer pressure that are standard. I just have to change it from the, uh, the one that is used from medicals, that is millimeters of mercury, into our system that is Newton over centimeter squared. But actually, if you can see here, oh, it's, uh, uh, no, uh, well, I don't have here, but in another one, but to change the, because the, we can also retrieve then the data, the, 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 the values that uh, doctors are used to see, so the millimeters of mercury is just a changing of like a multiplication. So I will start it. So it's here. Okay. Uh, hopefully it will start. So we can see it loaded the mesh. This one is step six. I mesh is the big one. And now is you just, I just stop. Uh, is just sh uh, just to show that we are just solving our model for now just in the lamina. The, the open modelica has already been done, so now it's just the 3D one. Uh, and now it's going, it's, this is recovering all the data. Okay, I will, this is just to show you and I'll come back later and to show the end. Now I, pr I will show you some results that we have retrieved with uh, a more complex, with a more fine mesh, so we can see. Uh, this is uh, the displacement. Uh, we, this is the, 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 the results that I have presented uh, two weeks ago in the United States at the Arvo. And um, actually, there are, we have made a test with three different uh, blood pressure, patients of different blood pressure. And actually, for example, for the displacement, we haven't seen any difference between the blood pressure and the results that we have obtained for what concerned the, the values, the real values, are really close to the one that are obtained in literature and other groups have obtained just with the model of biomechanics. Here it's quite important, I, sh I highlight here uh, the CRA and the CRV blood velocity. In our case, this is the one computed by the model, in particular by the open modelica model. We have retrieved it in our 3D model and then print it out. And actually, if you maybe you remember what uh, uh, Professor Harris has shown with the color Doppler imaging, these images are really close to the one that you retrieve with color Doppler imaging, in particular in the central retinal artery. So uh, we can make a comparison with them and try to validate our model or to be like more specific and this is like the same profile that we have obtained with the color Doppler imaging. Uh, these are the demo of uh, the visualization because we have like four in this case with our uh, four seconds uh, of simulations. Uh, in particular on the, uh, on the left we have the pressure that is changing with the three, still we have the three different patients with low blood pressure, normal blood pressure and high blood pressure. And on the, le on the right we have the perfusion. I've t so uh, it's like the blood flow inside. The idea of this one is that really uh, we can retrieve a spatial distribution of the perfusion inside the lamina that is with the, for now that I know there, is n there are no instruments that are able to, uh, to measure it because it's a spatial distribution. We hope that it will help clinicians to take decision and to look really inside if something is wrong. Uh, I'm, so then uh, I can show another demo that is made before. And this is like on oh, the whole high, we can see like how it is different, like the, the color Doppler and inside the, 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 the perfusion in the lamina. With a, it's another simulation with similar data, but uh, on, a, on a previous geometry. 
So just before going to level two, we can see, oh, it's not finished yet, so we can go later. So uh, level two. Uh, level two is the same as before with the lamina cribosa. We are solving the Poisson and the elasticity in 3D and the 0D model uh, with the, the circuit uh, in the blood circuit in the retina. But we are adding the elasticity for also the other parts of the eye, so the sclera, choroid, retina, and corna for now. Um, in particular, okay, this is an image, but I would like, since it's a demo, I can show you this is our, the results that we have. This is like online. We can, okay, so. This is what, oh, wait, yes, is here. I uh, just, okay, for example, this is all the simulation in all the, our geometry. You can see that there are some values. Then I made, oh, I've already extracted, for example, here. Okay, this with Paraview, I can extract some parts uh, that are of my interest. For example, now I have extracted the cornea, but easily I can, for example, extract the sclera. And is here, so oop. And we can have a 3D spatial distribution of the elasticity. This is the displacement inside the inside the sclera, and then also the choroid. We see different parts, and then also well, just to be retina and lamina at the end. Just we can also compose them together. So we see here there is the lamina, and here the retina. And, uh, as, and this is uh, just a cut for the, for the OI. This part is completely blue because our parts that we're not taking into account yet. This is the displacement in OI. We have still do more some validation tests, but it like, seems everything is working, so it's a good, uh, good way for after. And then see, just see, okay, perfect. Yeah, this is as finished, so. I will retrieve the data here on my laptop, uh, just to be more quick. This is all the data of uh, just one second of simulation, because otherwise it takes a lot of time. So with Paraview, I can uh, retrieve the data. This is the level one, just to remind you. So uh, firstly, we can go to uh, see the, the data from the coming from the Poisson. OK. so. Here is the old, the old geometry of the eye still, but now we are focusing just on the lamina, so we are taking an extra block, and then uh, lamina. Okay, here, and we go here. Okay, it's a really rough mesh because otherwise it's like take a lot of time, but we see, for example, here that the potential as the the the, the, the boundary that we have imposed, uh, actually the potential that we reached on the, on the, on the, on the lateral boundary is, automat is automatically computed, uh, that is der derived by the, um, the pressure that is has to be done, that has to be imposed to have the, the flux that we are taking into account from the zero D circulation. And then I would like to show you also the flux. In particular, I can use this, uh, tool glyph to show you the direction. OK, I can go, yes, like this. OK, for example, you can see here how the direction of the blood flow is, con is going from the outside into the uh, inside. So it's what we are expecting, actually. Uh, so they are going from, and then I can show you the, what is going on for the elasticity. Uh, this is just, OK, here. We still have all the, the big uh, geometry, but we are solving it just uh, in the lamina. So I'm just retrieving it. OK. Here we can see the displacement. OK, here also the displacement is a little bit rough, but as expected. But uh, we would like to see if it's in the direction that we are expecting. So we are, since uh, we have imposed an IOP that is greater than the intra, intra, intracranial pressure, we expect that the lamina is deforming outside from there. So, oh, yes, this is always happening, so. Perfect, so we see that uh, as a main direction, but we can see from with the, 
old overview. So I just to be show you like this. OK, so we see that uh, the lamina is actually bending on the optic nerve as expected, because we are, for example, here, we have the IOP that is pushing, and here the lateral lamina pressure that is pushing here. So actually, since the IOP is greater than the ECP, we obtain the, what, the, the profile that we are expected. So we are coming back to the presentation, actually the level two, and now the level three is the, what we would like to, it's the next step. Uh, the figure is like already like presented a lot of time, is the whole circulation in all the body. Uh, for what concerns the level three, we are taking the level two, but we would like also to add the vitreous and the aqueous. So actually, is this part, if you can see, is the, this part of the circulation is taking also the aqueous humor, and we would like also to implement it uh, with uh, also 3D. Uh, if, and also here is a count with the uh, brain. So we would like also to couple it with the project of, uh, that the Christophe has mentioned before. Um, so the status of the thing, level one and two are done. Uh, we, uh, we have a continuous integration with Pilkite, and uh, so it's, and the progress, uh, we, have, we, are, we are trying to do it now, we are working on, to, for level three, uh, we are working on also to create some Docker images, and uh, also the, what I mentioned before, the open modelica coupling in two ways, because for now the open modelica is just retrieving some data, and we are taking into account uh, into our 3D model, but the idea is also that the 3D model is interacting with the 0D one. Uh, uh, actually, we have already tried a, a connection uh, between the, the, the 0D and the 3D. Uh, it's working, but uh, with the Open Modelica, but it's not with uh, the tool of Open Modelica. So uh, we are still working on it to integrate Open Modelica in uh, Field Plus Plus. And uh, what the things to do is the singularity images to create some uh, singularity images to porting it to Cisca and FT2. And the uh, idea is really now with the, what I mentioned before, the ocular, ocular geometry is parameterized. The idea is really to have some images, direct images from the OCT or from MRI or other, and automatically computed it inside the, 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 the model. So we are really taking out the real patient did uh, specifically ocular geometry. Thank you for your attention.